Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. Miss Celestial's prophecy about Kamala Harris becoming the next president is proven to be false with the victory of Donald Trump. Will people write Miss Celestial off or will they show her grace just like they show some of these mega pastors that get caught up in these scandals and all these allegations? Check this out is the time of Kamala Harris. A woman will be in the White House. She will achieve what Hillary and others were unable to achieve, in that America will have a female president. When she receives power, she will rule as an unelected king, but there is another coming after her. Mark what I told you. During her time in office, she will bust up America and break it apart, dismantling many of its most precious institutions via blunt executive orders that overturn things this nation has always stood for. She will scribble with a felt-tipped marker over the timeless tenets of the Constitution, removing strength from it through hastily scribbled executive orders that make the provisions useless or close to it. Just as a marker is bigger and bolder than the smaller pens used to write the Constitution, so her executive orders will be bigger and bolder than the constitutional provisions. It will render them useless and unable to help the American people who have so trusted in them. So we see the Lord continuing to reiterate the theme that he started with me on election day when he gave me the message, no more grace. And then starting that night, the series of dreams and even during the day from that period on November 3rd, the 4th, and then the 5th, the 7th, all the way to the 12th, as we were actually waiting to see an outcome concerning the U.S. election. These were the things that the Lord was, excuse me, please, making known to me. And so he says here in this one that when it is time for Mrs. Harris to take up her seat in the Oval Office, that she will actually bust up the nation and break it apart by dismantling it through the use, or should I say the overuse of executive orders. And he says that he, he said something particular. He said that she would scribble with a marker on top of the Constitution. And the scribbles, or should I say, um, the superimposed writing that she would make obviously not writing directly on the document, but the changes that she would make would be very blunt and they would be like the use of a hammer. So if you haven't seen the message that I brought forth where I saw that the Lord had her like, he showed her as a colossus over the nation of the United States and she had a hammer, a mallet in her hand and she was breaking up the country with that mallet. Please go back and watch that one. It's called the Brick Breaker Game. And so he says that just as a marker is bigger and bolder than the delicate and the fine pens that they use to write the Constitution, so her use of executive orders in the presidency will be bigger and bolder than whatever it is that the Constitution has. And her executive orders will render the Constitution basically useless and will not be able to help the American people anymore. Now, as the Lord was saying this to me, I did see a vision. And what I saw saw was that a big black marker began to scribble over the Constitution of the United States. So I saw the Constitution there and it had a little curly top and a little curly bottom, just like you would see the way it's stylized and presented as a scroll. And I saw suddenly this marker just appear and start writing on it. So it was like somebody was making notes and revisions directly on the document. In certain parts, I saw that there was a big X. So those parts were canceled canceled out altogether. In certain parts, the word void was written in very bold letters, and that part was made null and void. And as I watched, it seemed that the Constitution was encased in glass. So um, it, it looked like it was in a protective glass casing, you know, in a museum or something. You know, it's a sacred document being kept safe. And yet somehow this marker was able to write on the surface of the glass and the writing appeared on the document. So it wrote through the, the glass. And this writing was done so much that eventually the final product 
product was that whatever the marker wrote became the primary writing on the document. So that is the vision that the Lord showed me. And then he said to me, she will take over and she will rule. But again, I say to you, one is coming after her shortly. And it is that one that the nation of America should be watching and waiting for. So that's the end of what the Lord showed me. And I just want to make um, a note here that this is not the first time that I've spoken about the fate of the U.S. Constitution and what will be of it in the days ahead. Um, what God showed is that more and more power will be sucked out of this document through the use and overuse of the executive office until it really won't be able to protect anything for people anymore. So I brought for, forth many, many prophecies on um, this channel and one of them was that America, you will see increased search and seizure um, due to all sorts of concerns such as national security and even some of them uh, in honor of coronavirus and god used that phrase in one prophecy in honor of coronavirus uh, you will see increased search and seizure without warrant you will see home and property invasions by the armed force that will take place without the proper paperwork um, you will also see pushback and resistance from the top against the right to bear arms and defend your home yourself and your property so uh, you might want to visit the blog and and look at the posts, Revelation 13, and all six, she said, I'm Kamala Harris, and I am the President of the United States. And then from that time on, November 5th, November 7th, all the way up to, I think, the 10th, I was constantly having these dreams, and the Lord kept speaking to me, even when I was awake. He would say things like, Celestial, this is Kamala's election. This is Kamala's election. I'll be thinking, Lord... All right, Lord, I would jot these things down. And basically, um, there was a series of dreams that I had, and I will list them for you at the end, but that's just to give you context. That at the time that nobody was looking at Kamala Harris, at the time that nobody was looking at her, everybody was looking at Joe Biden and Donald Trump, the Lord Jesus Christ said that Kamala Harris was going to be president of this country, saying that, Barack, um, saying that Joe Biden, is gonna bring two people with him into the White House. One of those people would be Kamala Harris and the other person would be Barack Obama. And so this, today is February the 25th. It's February the 25th of like three something. But yesterday, yesterday I was doing Bible reading. <coughs> Excuse me, please. A little bit hoarse now. Yesterday I was doing Bible reading and the Lord just suddenly started to speak about something totally different. I was reading in a different part of the Bible and he suddenly said, speak to them about the change of government that is coming to the United States. And I remember that just the night before I had had that dream of how militarized America is going to be. America is not going to be the freedom nation that we know. It's going to be very different. So the Lord started to say, speak to them. Speak to them about the change of government coming to the United States. And I knew the Lord was going to give me a message. So I got my implements and to, to write. And this is what the Lord gave me. Speak about the change of government coming to the United States. There is a new government coming to the USA. A top-down authoritarian form of government that operates on favoritism nepotism instead of involvement by the citizen and interconnected reliance on a three-branch system of government so there's a new system of governance that's going to come to america i've been discussing this for many years giving many many descriptions of how this government going, is going to be this government has gone by several names here on the master's voice prophecy blog one of those names is the rogue government saying that there's going to be a rogue government in the United States. Another of those names has been the Beast government. Another of those names has been the Revelation 13 government. Another of those names has been a renegade government. And now the Lord is simply saying a top-down government, authoritarian, meaning that 
there's no input from the bottom. There's no input from the people. There's no involvement where the people get to be a part of the system of government. The people will be told what the government is doing and the people will be told this is your role in it and here's where you fall in line. This is your part in the play and the government's basically going to write the play, direct the play, execute the play and at the end of it all execute people as well. This is going to be a government that conducts pogroms. Please excuse the noise. The government is definitely going to overstep. The government is going to overreach. The government is going to severely abuse power. These things, I've been saying them for a very long time, but now God is saying that this new government is going to come in and it's going to be working with favoritism and nepotism. Favoritism is literally what it sounds like. You have your favorites. You pick people based on emotional choices. You don't necessarily pick them based on their credentials. You don't pick them based on their years of experience. You don't pick them because they're the right person for the job. You pick them because, hey, you know, that's my that's my favorite movie star, and so now I'm going to make him a governor or something like that. This is just an example. You pick people based off of emotionally charged choices. You don't pick people because they're the best pick. You don't pick them because they stand out. You don't pick them because of merit. And nepotism is the same thing. This is promoting your friends. This is promoting family. This is promoting blood-related members into political positions instead of giving it to the right person. So immediately you are hearing the Lord describe for us here a very fatty form of government where you pick those who are close to you and you keep them close and then you shut avenues whereby ordinary people, well-deserving people, hard-working people, qualified people, even long-serving people in previous governments will be able to come back. And he also says that there's going to be less involvement by the citizen in the nation and there's also going to be less interconnected reliance on a three-branch system of government. Traditionally, it's supposed to be the judiciary, it's supposed to be the legislative branch, it's supposed to be the executive branch. And these three branches, they work together. If they work together seamlessly, then that's a very healthy country. If there's competition between the branches, this is where you might see political instability you might see economic breakdowns, you might see coup, coups and things like that. The three branches are not operating. But what God is saying here is that America is going to basically do away with needing two of the branches. America is not going to really rely on a healthy functioning three branch system. It's going to start to be very strong on the executive branch and it's going to be very, very much less on the judicial branch and the legislature. So the Lord then said tell them about the loss of political power in the legislature and the judiciary both of them will atrophy until they're little more than figurehead fixtures of the u.s government to atrophy means to shrink and to become weak atrophy describes the action of a limb that you are not using until it becomes useless if somebody was to tie your arm to your body for a week that arm will be so weak and so withered compared to your straight arm that's allowed to have movement and blood flow. And so God was saying, tell them about the loss of political power in the legislature and the judiciary. Both of them are going to shrink until they're hardly anything more than figurehead fixtures within the U.S. government. So not necessarily doing away with them, but just stripping them of power, leeching them of power until they're there more in name only, but they're not really very effective and it's a very dangerous situation when a when a country has especially a court system that is only a dummy court system in countries like that they usually kill the citizens because you cannot get a fair trial the judges are already bought or the judges are afraid you can't get a fair trial and it's a highly risky place to live same with if the lawmakers are being shackled if the lawmakers are being bound and so God was saying, senators will only be needed for brief consultations and appearances. So, purely for looks. That's
that's what the senators will be needed for when they'll say like i'm standing here um you'll have you'll have kamala standing there and saying you know i met with a few senators and then she's going to have a few key guys there and they're going to be standing there like yes we met with her but they didn't really do anything they were probably called into a private session and told i want to do this and this and this and you guys are going to see to it that it happens see senators will only be needed for brief consultations public appearances or to rubber stamp executive decisions the immense power that a u.s senator enjoys now will be stripped away and will be replaced with figurehead power and the prophecy is not coming to mind at the moment but i will look for it and link it below and i'll leave a little tag so you can know this is the part i'm talking about where i was saying that senators in particular are going to lose so much power that they're going to just be drawing some kind of nominal salary as a token and i was saying in that prophecy i said so senators enjoy the power that you have now because later you're either going to be defunct you're going to be unemployed or you're simply going to be there as little bobbleheads to nod to what Whatever the executive says they will be asked for an opinion they will play an advisory role but in real terms the executive is going to have very sharp teeth while the other branches will be effectively turned into toothless bulldogs then the lord said tell them that kamala harris will be president of america and with her will come regime change and regime government Tell them Kamala's going to be president of the USA and she's bringing regime change and regime government. Now, a lot of people, because of TV, because of news, because terms just get tossed around, they just say, oh, that's a regime, that's a regime. But did you ever take the time to look up what a regime is? A regime is a form of government that is extremely strict. In fact, the word regime, when you define it, it means a method. That's one of its primary definitions. A regime is a method. So if you see somebody, you ask her, oh, you look so great. What's your skincare regime? Or you see somebody who's so fit. What's your gym regime? When this person starts talking about a regime, they're actually detailing for you a very strict methodology, a very strict process that they do not deviate from very often. Athletes have regimes. They do the same thing day after day, week after week, month after month, because that's the only way of ensuring that their physical bodies, which is the major asset that they use in life, that their physical asset stays in peak shape and offers peak performance. So when someone says regime government, they're telling you that this is a government that does not break from character. Now, America is definitely going to break from character from being a democratic republic and a free nation and a nation that supports laws at least on paper and there's going to be a sharp break away from that into a very north korea very china very old style russia type of government so there's definitely going to be that sharp break away from that but once the government gets into its overreaching illegal activities it's not going to break character anymore it's going to stay in character as that and so kamala is bringing regime government i've explained it to you but she's also bringing regime change that's what i've just explained that america is going to break away from what she's always done her old regime which is go to court and sue someone if you have a case if you have a grievance bring it and we'll have overseeing bodies we have watchdogs watching watchdogs we have internal commissions and all that that stuff is going to go away and there's going to be a regime change into a regime government and so in a regime government the power doesn't change hands easily and all the checks and balances that make sure that the government stays interrelated and accountable to one another are not present this means that basically when the executive when the white house starts to grow outside of its mandated space no one is going to be able to stop it no one is going to be able to say anything the judges will be trying to fight for their lives and i guess they'll just be bought out or threatened or whatever will happen they will be toothless and the lawmakers will be toothless the lord says the u.s government will have very concentrated 
executive power in the executive branch. And the president that we will see this the most with is Kamala Harris. So it's not as if to say that the United States hasn't had strong presidents in the past. Strong cabinets, especially those presidents that were wartime presidents. No, God is saying that we're going to see something brand new, where we're going to see excessively concentrated power happening with the executive branch to almost the exclusion of the other two. And it's not going to happen overnight. Don't expect to see that when this woman gets into power, she'll get sworn in. The next thing you know, Senate is closed and stuff like that. It's not going to be like that. God says that the person we're going to see this with the most is Kamala Harris. This is compared to her predecessors. So you have to have understanding when you're listening. Hers is a top-down government where she was going to work less with lawmakers than any other president before her. And so when the Lord was telling me this and I'm writing it down, I started to hear Kamala say this. Let's get it done. Let's get it done. Let's figure out a way and get this done. This woman is not going to come and say, I am Kublai Khan and start to say, I forbid this and I forbid that. There's a language that goes with this thing that the Bible calls peace and safety. There's a way to present things. There's a way that you put it across where you don't look like a slavering savage from the forest that is going to say, get it done by midnight or everyone's head comes off. No, there's a way to present things where it looks like like it's multilateral cooperation where it looks like oh no everybody gets a say here but actually there's only one pressure point that's being applied and it will be coming from the commander in chief who's going to be uh, a woman and so let's get it done she will say and then she's going to end up writing an executive order to accomplish her object objectives instead of working with the lawmakers or working with the courts. And she's going to use this phrase, let's get it done. Here's the whole sentence that the Lord gave me. This is when she's asked. So as you listen to this, when she's asked, well, why, why did you do this? Why did you decide to proceed this way? What, what, what was the rationale behind that? This is what she's going to say. Uh, we, we needed to get it done. We looked at the numbers and we evaluated the situation and we decided that the quickest way to get things moving uh, was the way that we chose. The normal route, the normal route, obviously this is working with the lawmakers, the normal route was something that we considered. But in the end, due to time constraints and just for the good of the United States, we decided on this way because we needed to get it done. So what God is promoting here, what God is premiering here for us before it happens is the particular language that you can expect to hear coming out of a Kamala Harris White House. We were working against time. We were working with budgetary constraints. We knew that it was going to take a long time with the senators and the House. We considered it. It's the normal way. We're not ignorant. We know how the government works. We found the government working a certain way when we got here. But for the good of the United States, we needed to get this done. This is justifiable cause this will be a white house of justifiable cause to put it in simpler terms the ends justifies the means we had to make an omelet so we broke a few eggs this is how kamala harris is going to justify using the executive order pen a little too freely and two prophecies for that you can look at is I think it's Kamala Harris and the Beast Part 1. You can also look at the break, the brick breaker game. Um, oh, another one is a broken rule of law. Definitely in that prophecy, a broken rule of law. Um, the Lord showed me Kamala Harris and she had the constitution in front of her and she was scribbling all over it with a big black marker. She was scribbling all over it, crossing out whole provisions and then writing some stuff on top of the constitutional document. She was not writing on a copy she was writing on the actual thing and i have been saying here for at least since 2020 that the u.s constitution is going to end up completely useless it's going to end up defunct it's going to end up losing all its potency all its powers they're constantly going to un undermine that document in the years ahead they may not repeal an amendment they may not repeal anything in it per se what they will do is they will just make a ton of small little laws 
laws that will ring fence a particular amendment. Gun laws is definitely one of them. They're going to make small little adjustments here, here, here until the actual Second Amendment becomes completely useless. It's useless. See, the thing about it is when a prophet prophesies and these things don't unfold, Many people start to question them. Many people start to look at them funny or, or look at them as if they are false. Some prophecies take years to unfold. Will Kamala Harris be our next president? We don't know. Will people write Miss Celestial off as a credible source? Will they write her off as a credible source for prophesying? I have covered many of Miss Celestial's videos and messages and, and, and the lady, she delivers some strong hold words for the Lord. She speaks on sin. She tries to draw people back into the Lord. She speaks against homosexuality. She speaks against what some of these pastors are doing in the church. She speaks highly of the body of Christ and fixing it and molding it back together but will people write her off because of Kamala Harris prediction was wrong hey everybody has an opinion make sure you drop down in the comments let me know your thoughts and opinion on this video